it's me. And uh, so I am at VR Studios, um, who makes the VR cave system. And uh, I just did two, um, two experiences. So one, uh, I'll start with the one I just did last with their Atom unit, which is um, in essence a exit reality cube. Um, and what these guys are doing is they're using the Intel wireless um, system from Vive, so the two, uh, to do two player games in a 10 foot space. And um, I didn't get to do the two player one, but you can see this is the Intel. And I played um, their zombie game, which is this one here. Um, I'm not sure that's the right one. I played a, I played a zombie game and um, two pistols. First of all, love fucking dual pistols. We need more du dual pistols in VR. It makes you feel like a superhero. Um, and, uh, and, and it was good. Like, you know, you're tethered to a, a space. You're, in a, you're on a small platform. You're not teleporting, you're not moving. Literally, it's a wave shooter and there's zombies coming at you, but from four or five directions, they come at you at different speeds. There's power-ups to shoot to get different weapons. Um, you know, headshots get bonuses, streaks get bonuses. So it's really arcadey. They did a really good job of, um, of doing arcades. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to see a score. I don't know if there is a score. Like, there didn't feel like there was... I, I know there was a scoring mechanism, but I didn't get to do it. Um, and uh, I'm a little bummed because I think I was kicking ass because, you know, I like to shoot zombies. But it was really super fun. And so this, um, this product sells for... 25 grand for two players the cube is 10 grand so now you're at 35 grand for two players which is you know 17 grand per person they've got six games multiple levels each game has what i really like is each game has four levels and so you go into um you go into a game you play level one when you come back you know you can play level two you can play level three if you beat each level they let you play the, the next consecutive level for free so you come in you play level one if you beat it next time you play level one you come in and play level two so repeat playability built in i don't know if, i don't know if they're managing it automatically with um with player logins and registrations uh, which would be nice but not necessary uh, but yeah i really liked it it was fun it was fun fun game um sense of, and it was scary it was like it wasn't the, the thing that i have with a lot of the games that i'm seeing these days is um just they're not scary enough. Like if you go in and you go into a zombie game or a horror game, you expect to be scared. It's the reason you do it. And um, and stuff like Alien, I'm just so frustrated with um, uh, from Fox Next and Pure Imagination because it was never even remotely scary. There was no peril at all. The aliens are up against the fence and you're shooting them. So it's you know it's 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 kind of like fish in a barrel. And in this case, you know, you turn around, there's a zombie right there, and it's like ah, it's a jump scare. And so. Um, it could probably be scarier, but I don't think it needs to be. It was actually pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I, I really liked that one. So then I did, um, so I did, I did the, um, um, this one here, the, the player versus player. And, um, and I was, uh, yeah, the power play. And I was, I liked it. I have to tell you, I was dubious about how they were going to use the space because the space is really small. And they're mapped one-to-one, -one, the virtual space to the physical space, which means the virtual arena was only 30 by 30, and you had four people in it free roam running around. And you're running around because they're shooting at each other, and, you know, you can't avoid that. It's like laser tag. They tell you not to run, but everybody runs. And so, um, but what they've done is they've, they've, they've layered in a lot of elements into the game to add strategy, which, which eliminates the boredom, which you would have in this kind of a map if it was just a one-to-one -one ratio and I'm going to try to explain what I mean by showing you this game that's going on right now. And so the purple walls are the barriers that you can hide behind. The yellow walls you can actually stick your head through and see on the other side so you can sneak in and, 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 and see them. The yellow dots are power and so if you run out of power for your gun you have to go over and eat the yellow dots so it's kind of like Pac-Man to power up. Um, you have two weapons and a shield. I never even used the shield. I actually just remembered it now. Um, but you have a, you have a, a, a gun. There's, um, there's, there's ballistic, um, there's ballistic um, physics in it. I don't know if it's accurate or not, but it's not like a straight rifle shot. It's more like a grenade lob. Um, and then there's a bomb so you can hold up 
the gun and you can, hey Alex, um, and you can charge it and then fire a bomb. I blew myself up, I tend to do that a lot. And then the third thing is there's a, there's a you can use the thumb button for a shield, but I never actually use that. Um, and and so the, 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 the fact that there's three, two weapons, a defense mode, two kinds of walls and power-ups, there's a lot going on, a lot to think about in a short game. So there's enough strategy about how you're gonna play and how you're gonna play the map um, to be able to, for it to be fun. Now, will it be fun on the fifth play? I don't know. Um, I still have concerns about the fact that it's a small space and um, I think there's more that you can do. And, and Alex um, from Neurogaming, I know you're listening, and this was what I did at, at, at this morning playing Polygon, was we were in a thousand square foot space, you know, 30, 30 by 30, let's call it, but I was in a, I was in a 5,000 square foot arena um, or more with five, three or four levels. And so the space felt infinite. Um, and it was what really fucking interesting. Um, that being said, this was fun. Um, they're charging a hundred grand for it, which feels really pricey considering it's running Lighthouse and, and, and four backpacks. So you can get, it's twice the cost of Arizona Sunshine. Um, now some of that is their AMP platform, plus they're taking 15% revenue share. So, um, I don't know. Feels like they're not quite in tune with the market um, as far as price goes, but. I should go back on camera because I know you're missing seeing me. Um, so for 100 grand, I choked on it actually. And I even said to him, I was like, 100 grand, what do you get? And he got really defensive. He said, well, it's on our AMP platform. And, um, and you know, but so realistically, you've got, and I know this isn't the metric by which sale price should be determined, but you've got like probably five backpacks and five. So you're at, you know, you're at 25 grand in cost, a bunch of battery chargers, um, Lighthouse 2.0, they're using the regular Vive controllers, so um, nice fat margin on that for them. Good for them if they can get it, and if it earns, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I feel like it's probably should be seventy grand, not a hundred. Um, and fifteen percent revenue share to me feels really high um, for what they're bringing to the market compared to what some of the other guys have. But anyway, that's uh, that's VR Studios. Uh, I was really impressed. Um, they've got a couple of good products. They're all worth looking at and they're certainly worth playing. And, uh, and so now I'm wandering over to the Arsenal. So this is another company I've been watching really closely. Um, and I really love some of the stuff that they're doing. So I'm going to turn around and show you. So, so they've created a couple of, so these guys, um, actually, hold on. So these guys did the software for Periscape, which is running the VR towers at JFK in New York. And, um, and they're running it with one attendant, um, running 12 towers. So pretty good ratio of employee or ambassador, as they call it at Periscape, um, to customer ratio. So what these guys have been pushing now for, they also run the, um, the, the VR lounges at Punchbowl Social. Um, so they've been working with, you know, lightly attended VR. Mark Schlesser! Come on, baby, how you doing? Say hi. Excellent. What do you think? I think so, I like it. So Mark likes it. What do you think? They don't care what, people do care what I think, but I care what you think. What do you think? I think I like it. I've been frustrated with their setup today and the show yesterday and not being able to keep things functioning, but I think they had some software issues that they're working through. Okay. But the platform is solid. The titles are solid. And let's see some earnings. Cool. Yeah. So, um... So there you go, yeah. And I will say that I tend to cut people slack for trade show demos not working because the interference, the inter lack of internet connection, like the, it's a chaotic environment. And I know, you know, it, and, and, and the Wi-Fi is, like if any of this requires, now it shouldn't require an internet connection though. It's a single player game, right? Um, some of the free roam guys are struggling, but Michael Gatlin, Michael Gatlin just tried to call me. So, um, <laughs> sorry, Mike, you gotta wait. Watch out like everybody else. Um, so anyway, what I like about this is the curb appeal. Massive curb appeal. Um, let's, uh, let's get in here and see it. So this is the Predator version. They've aged it and it's really well branded. It's got a gun and a headset that are kind of 
tied together in a really weird way. So I'm not crazy about that. Um, Yep, but they did, yep, not only, and not only tethered, but power. So what they did here is they've got tethered power, so no battery charging in the Vive controllers. And they've created this custom 3D printed enclosure to go over the Vive, which includes strain reliefs, right? Here and here, and then it can just hang. And so they've given it a lot of thought um, and uh, to the operation, and it's designed to be unattended. So literally, you just walk up to it, and you put in your money or whatever, and you play. So they have, um, so they have a, a, a Fruit Ninja version. They're also using like these little hologram. Which are kind of cool with the fans. They've got one here for Beat Saber. So they have a Beat Saber tower. Um, and then, unfortunately, I see a keyboard. You never want to see a keyboard on days like this. Um, and then here's the Predator one. You got to put the headset on. Am I allowed to do it? Yeah. It's, it's supposed to be unattended. So let's see if it works. Here, I'll tighten it up for you. How's that? It's off. I don't see anything. Ah, uh, it's off? Huh. Yeah, no How do you make it work? Unfortunately, this one is not operational. Thank you. Ah, uh, okay, there you go. The other one is from the other side. That's why I got a big queue over there. There you go. Yeah. So, um... Alright, we're going to see this guy. Here we go. <laughs> So this is a problem. Don't worry, it won't use up any of your game time. Then when you're ready, you can Not quite ready for prime time, but she's having fun. So they're using the Striker VR gun. So this unit is, I believe, um, I want to say this one's like 35. And these are 30, or maybe these are 35, and that's 40. But this one's five grand more because um, of some of the finishing on it and the Striker VR gun, which you guys probably know is about three grand off the shelf anyway. So um, here's a Beat Saber. Can I peek inside? Uh, I'd rather not, just because. All right, this is just. That's to show why you. I'm asking. I, it's just to show you it right now. Totally, totally. So I don't want to put up wrong idea. That's how. Totally understood. What's the price in between the two? The one is thirty-four eight. That one is forty-four. Eight. Okay, so so it's thirty-five and forty. Um, and uh, yeah, so look, we're pushing the envelope on some of these things on a per player basis. You know, forty grand per player. You know, you can, that's, a, you know, 160 grand for four players. You can get a, you know, you can get a, 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 a free roam, thousand square foot, five lighthouse two setup. 50 grand. Um, the Atom unit is, the Atom unit is um, for two players, 35 grand. So, um, but I will tell you, in an FDC, that thing's gonna earn. People are gonna play it because it's huge, and it's gonna—it's got amazing curb appeal. And so, um, yeah. So anyway, really interesting. I know Mikey's got a couple. Mike Gatlin's got a couple of them coming. So as soon as he gets them installed, you know I'll have more information. We'll have earnings coming too. So uh, anyway, Bob's here. I'm gonna say I'm gonna grab a, a virtual selfie with my predator buddy. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm out and I'll be back.